You're listening to Saturday with Ted on News Talk 1010. Thank you so much, Bill King. You like wrestling? Well, then you're going to like our next guest. He is the, uh, well, let's say he is he is the, the founder of um, what can be described as down-to-earth, blue-collar wrestling at its best. Andrew McRae, how are you? I'm doing well, Ted. How are you? I'm very well. This 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 is very much reminiscent of, of the kind of wrestling that that I used to watch and go see occasionally down at Maple Leaf Gardens, where you had sort of episodic wrestling, where there were th- stories that carried along and along and along and along. That's correct. And I'm they trying. They weren't the big uh, big blow up shows that that exist now with the you know the WWE. Right. But the WWE is a product that comes from those shows back in the day. Sure. It's just grown over the years. Sure. Um, but I am trying to target people's warm and fuzzy feelings of nostalgia. Uh, and I knew that uh, the style of show would be right up your alley if you remember Maple Leaf Wrestling. Yeah. So it, what you've been doing is you've done, what, five? You've had five evenings so far? Yeah, five afternoons. We did three. Or afternoons in the yep. parking lot outside Shacklands Brewing. Correct. In the Junction area. Yes, sir. So Shacklands Brewing Co. is one of several microbreweries that have opened up around the city, particularly in the junction. I approached the owner, Dave Watts, about having a wrestling show in the parking lot, and right away he said, that's a great idea, let's do it. So when you do it in the, in the, in the parking lot, are, you, are they allowed to serve in the parking lot beer? Yeah, so they get the license, the special occasion permit, and they serve their craft beer, their Belgian-inspired ales out in the parking lot. To... I guess as long as it's fenced in, right? Yes, correct. It's right. all fenced in, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So how have, how have the crowds been? They have progressively gotten bigger. Um, I'd say we've tripled attendance between last year and this year. So it's growing. I think word of mouth is the number one way that it's growing, mm-hmm. and hopefully there might be some wrestling fans listening today on radio that will stay tuned for our future dates coming so up. So when you say triple, so like how many people? 100, 100 people? A couple hundred people? Last year, I'd say we were drawing about 100 people. This year, at any given point in time, we likely got close to 300 people in the parking lot. That's pretty good. It is, yeah. And it's kids, it's dads, it's moms, it's grandmas, it's dogs, it's the whole family. <laughs> okay. So I guess now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find a new location because pretty soon you're not going to be able to do it outside. Correct. Like today, you wouldn't want to be outside. No, and we've gotten lucky the five times we have had it outside. We've had beautiful weather. The sun shone down upon us. But as the winter months move in, I'm hoping to get inside to some of the other microbreweries in the junction that will be able to actually house a show. I don't think we can get 300 people in there, but these will be sort of marquee events, and I'd be selling tickets to those, and some of the stories that play out will culminate at these shows inside the breweries. How would the people, or would the people know the names, and would they be familiar with the wrestlers? They would likely not be familiar with the wrestlers. We're all sort of young, up-and-coming wrestlers that... Do you wrestle? I do wrestle, so I've... uh, I've written myself into the show as the main villain. (laughs) Good good for you. (laughs) So that's a lot of fun. Most of the wrestlers that wrestle on Junction City Wrestling come from a home gym in Mississauga, which is called Battle Arts Academy, and that's run by a wrestler who people might know who was in the WWE for several years wrestling as Santino Morella, a name which is actually a tribute to a wrestler that you may know, Gorilla Monsoon, so his real name... No, I don't remember that. You don't remember Gorilla Monsoon? No, I don't. All right, well, Well, I'm sure... I wasn't a huge fan. I was just, you know, more of a passing fan. I'm sure somebody listening uh, knows what I'm talking about, but yeah, most of the wrestlers have uh, progressed as students and are just, you know, a few years in and haven't really gotten out there into the world as much as... But uh, are they... Would you call them professional wrestlers or they're on their way there? Most definitely. Most of the people on the show have at least wrestled somewhere where they've been paid to wrestle, so that would qualify them as a professional wrestler. Mm -hmm. And most of the guys train like professional athletes six, if not seven days a week. Uh, They look like professional athletes. And I generally base my decisions on who's going to get an opportunity on who I see training really hard. Like when I'm training, if I Mm. see, okay, I see this guy, he's doing all these other martial arts classes aside from professional wrestling and I know he's in the gym and he looks great and those are that's how you get an opportunity is by working hard you right. you get out what you put in because the, the wrestlers of uh, this day and age are are more athletic than they were back in let's say the 50s 60s you got a lot of big guys back then who were just big 
Yes. A lot of girth, not as much muscle, but now a lot of muscle. A lot of muscle. Times have changed. Certainly in the world of the WWE, there's now sort of, there's room for guys that are, you know, five foot nine and 200 pounds. They literally have a show on their own network, which is called 205 Live, which is for all the wrestlers that are 205 pounds and under. So they're not just looking for the giants that you would see back in the 70s and 80s. Now it's, they're looking for athletes. If they're, you know, a good giant comes along, though, they're still going to capitalize on him. Male and female wrestlers? Male and female wrestlers, yes. I don't even know if I can say this, but I will anyway. Midgets? They used to call them midget wrestlers. Yeah, there may there there may or may not be a little person wrestler taking part in Junction City Wrestling in the future. I might wrestle him myself, actually. But you you're a much taller though. Like how tall? Well, I'm much taller than him, but I'm a midget in the world of professional wrestling. (laughs) Well, sounds like a lot of fun. And and you don't have a date for the next event yet because you don't have an event uh, location yet, We do not have a date set in stone, but we're looking at early 2019, sometime in January or February. If people want to stay tuned on dates, they can follow us on Instagram or Twitter at at Wrestle Junction or, of course, Junction City Wrestling on Facebook. And if they want to watch all the episodes that have happened so far, they can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Junction City Wrestling. Good stuff. Andrew McCray, thank you very much. All the best and uh, happy Thanksgiving to you. Same to you, Ted. Thanks for having me.